Once you secure everything with the key, need to make sure that I'm the magic. It ain't do it for this three. Ma si può tutto burare, ma ti varo il mito, ma è molto male, è lindo fare, ne è, ma ti ci vita, non fisci da tre capi. Sono questo mio scicchi che è Record egy labdoló pás, 5 pontot szerez a meccsen, mint megint szép húszos minősítés. It's Eastern Conference Bliss as the Charlotte Bobcats come in attack for this one. This is Kevin Harlan here to call the action with me, Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg. Look at Indiana. They haven't had the year to this point they were hoping for, and maybe tough guys to write the ship for them. With this being the third game in four days, you know the legs are just a tad yeah, weary. You don't have the same bounce. You're not quite as fresh. So that means mentally, you have to be much more attentive and disciplined. Especially on the defensive end, Clark, because that's where those tired legs can really hurt you. So, like you said, there may be something lacking physically, but you can make up for it with your focus and concentration. And here are the Bobcats starting five, courtesy of State Farm. Nash out there with Thornton, then there's Cunningham, then it's Joel Prisbill, and it's McGuire in at the small forward position. And for the Pacers, we've got Danny Granger, Hill up. Here's Thornton. He had a 30-point outing their last game against Atlanta. Over Granger. Thornton no good. And it's Indiana's ball. Eight-point game. They couldn't put the pieces together losing that last matchup with Boston. I thought they'd come out a little sharper in the second half, but it really didn't happen. I mean, they started out slow and they finished slow. Well, Steve, I guess there's one thing we can say is that they were consistent, just not in the way you want to be consistent. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Well, Paul Silas gave me a few minutes to catch up with him. They'll have to deal with the size and shooting combination that Danny Granger presents, and he knows that is going to be a tough problem. He said that even though Granger might not be one of the headliner names in the NBA, he can eat defenses alive with the mismatches he creates. He's hoping they can avoid that in this one, guys. All right, Doris, thank you very much. The dish to pose it. To the inside, deflects the pass. Great steal in the paint. Thought he might get a layup out of it, and he wound up turning it over. Here's Green, and there's the whistle. Follow hard, and the shot he'll go to the line. As we approach the halfway mark, let's take a look at how everything in the East right now stands. As you take a look at Charlotte, this hasn't been the kind of year they envisioned. Time running out. And of course, the Indiana Pacers, two games back. Well, for Indiana, they performed at a level well below what I thought they were capable of. I mean, I expected a much, much better showing out of them. You're not the only one who thought that, Clark. I mean, 
even if they weren't going to be an elite team, I think most people felt they would at least be competitive and solid, but they are really struggling. Josh McRoberts has checked in for the Pacers. Hill comes in for Shannon Brown. And the Bobcats also make it a change here. Joel Frisbilla checked in for Kwame Brown. He doesn't get the second one. Pacers trail by nine. He's guarded by Thornton. And Chris Billis sends it back. This is their first chance this season playing the Pacers. And you know, guys, they had a really tough time handling this team a season ago. Outside Collison. And Chris Billis sends it back. Bobcats win by nine. Goes up. And he slams it home. Here's the replay on the Sprite Slam Camp. Impressive offensive execution to this point. That's what's gotten them this lead. Well, it's paid off on the scoreboard. The fact that they've been together and productive offensively. Going back quickly to Steve's comment, this opponent gave them more problems than any other the season ago. They sure did, Kevin, and they lost every time they faced him. I think that says it all right there. Here's Claxton, lays it up, and despite of the excellent defense at that. How about the determination right there on that putback? Here comes Augustine. Still looking to get the score. And now the first time out call here for the Bobcats. They're coming into this game off that recent loss to a back. And yeah, their long range shooting really deserves Here's Claxton, right up, misses in close. That was a layup, and you've got to knock that down. You've got to convert when you get those opportunities. On the floor for Charlotte, McGuire is out there with Cunningham. That's Thornton, then it's Garrett Temple, and it's Nash in at the point. And Thornton kicks to Temple. Down to five on the shot clock. Action shot is in. Well, that's been nice, efficient work, guys, that he's been doing. I mean, we haven't seen him take many bad shots, and that's the sign of a mature, poised player. Now the pass to McRoberts. Defended by Nash. McRoberts inside. He's against Cunningham. Just like they drew it up, fellas. Bobcats leading by 15. Now, here's Nash. 17 points in the game. Gathers. Out of bounds. Not no key possession. Let's take a brief moment to look at the 2K leaderboard with the list of the league's feistiest defensive teams. Number one, the Pacers. You know, this year they've been the number one team in terms of steals. They put an awful lot of pressure on the ball handler, and they also, as a team, do a good job of jamming the passing lanes. Textbook defense is what they play. Jeff Foster's checked in for the Pacers. Hill comes in for Danny Granger. The Bobcats also changing it up. Sagana Jop checks in for Dante Cunningham. And Joel Prisbilla subbed in for Garrett Temple. Good! Thornton's got four points in the quarter. Kevin, that's exactly the kind of shot you want off the inbounds play. Now Foster. Passes to Williams, and it's blocked. Rises up and throws it down. Here's Nash. 15-point game. And here's Thornton. He's got 14. Back to Nash. And the layup is good. Nash has got 19 points. Here's Williams. He's guarded by Thornton. Grant Hill on the wing. Coming in off a 12-point game, his last outing. Here's Claxton, and the layup's good off the glass. Well, they haven't been getting lit up from outside here. All the points they're giving up 
are from in close. They've got to offer more resistance. And defense has to get better, Clark. They've got to body up, bump somebody, get physical, force the action back out to the perimeter. Claxton gets called for the reach. And so we conclude the first half. Back in a moment from Indianapolis. Glad you could join us this Saturday night. It's time for the... Chicago with a loss to the Hawks at Phillips Arena. Welcome back, everyone, to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. Tipped. Great job playing the passing lanes and forcing that turnover. Everybody's running. Claxton, he's in a shooting guard. James Posey out there with Brown. Then there's Jeff Foster. And it's Collison in at the point guard position. That's the Pacers' five. Temple gets the bucket. That's three for four field goal shooting here in the third. So offensively, they're looking good. That's it. Claxton. But he recovers it. <laughs> Second shot opportunity. That's the front of the rim. And, out. and that's the way it's been. A big margin for them in the rebounding category. You know, sometimes you got to get down and dirty and do the dirty work. And, and this one, they've done it, and it's paid off on the scoreboard in a big way. Everything's going right now. Four for five shooting, 80%. They've got their offense clicking. Brown, the pass to Posey. And the Pacers, another three. Coming back with a three of their own. I like that. Good response. Yeah, I agree with you. See, this is a team that will not back down. I mean, I'm not surprised to see them answer that way. Augustine dishes to Brown. The timely screen gave him a step, and he took it all the way. Brown's got his second bucket of the night. Pacers trail by 19. Collison kicks to Brown. And blocked. Clark, one thing we've seen from these guys is excellent ball movement. And you love to see that, Kevin. I mean, I love watching unselfish play, and I know Steve enjoys that, too. Yeah, that's the best part of the game. I mean, a five-man team game where the ball moves has so much unselfish play. It's beautiful to watch. Here's Claxton. No dice from nine feet out. No dice. Here's the break. Here's the break. And it's Green missing. And the defender, the rotation came over, really seemed to bother him, and that threw that shot off. Bobcats with the rebound. Brown's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. And at home for the next game, it'll be Detroit pulling into town. That game is the first and last of their home. Sweet move. Augustine from outside gets it to go. Augustine's got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. A challenging stretch here for Indiana. Here's Claxton. Misses the lead. And this is why they have the big lead. The rebounding has been dominant. You know, guys, the uh, plus eight rebounding, I don't think it tells the whole story. I mean, they've been the more physical team from the outset. That's been the difference, their physicality. On offense, here are the Pacers. Left side, Callison. Back to Brown. He goes up, puts up the baby hook. But they recover it. Tries to snap the cold streak. Dives for it. 
Bobcats leading by 22. Augustine with it, averaging 13 points a contest. Claxton is tagged with the reach. That'll be his second foul of the game. One, yes, she was bad fix. Alright, she gave me a little bit Seven seconds left to play in the third. Shot, high post. That misses, but it kind of had it gone in. The three quarters of play all in the books, and this one all but over already. And now, let's send it to our sideline reporter, Doris Burke, for our Sprite Spark of the game. Doris? Thanks, Kevin. And it's the Bobcats with the Spark Award for the stretch they put together. Things started opening up for them in the third quarter as they exerted their will onto this game. And they are in complete control as the game now heads into the fourth and final period, guys. All right, Doris, thank you. That run has made a difference, guys. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what got them off the goal. Here's Williams, on the four for Charlotte. They've got Cunningham, Nash out there with Thornton, then it's McGuire, and it's Prisbilla in at the five, roaming the paint. Now here's Jones, D right on him. Six on the shot clock. From the top of the key, rattles the shot home. And you hope that's a sign that things are going to change because it's been a struggle for him to this point. I'm getting by four. Now here's Nash. Claxton gets the reach in call. And that'll be his third foul so far. 125 left in the fourth quarter of this one. Now Nash. Williams picks him up. That's the make it for them. He's really struggling in this quarter right now. They need to think about getting the ball out of his hand. Thornton, no good. A very rough quarter for him. Is not much as falling right now. Here is Cunningham. Puts up the baby hook. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials on the contact and he'll shoot too. Oh, that should be a rule. No layups. They take the pain, make them earn every point. Yeah, I think that's just tough, hard-nosed, smash-mouth basketball. Make your opponents earn their points from the line. Don't give up any layups. Can't get the first one to drop. Sinks the second, and that puts them up by five. Timeout call the Pacers. They're behind by five. There's 57 seconds left in the fourth. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Kevin, the head coach for the Pacers, had some instruction for his guys during that break. He sounded incredibly confident given the situation they're in. He said, all right, I hope they're not counting us out yet because we are going to win this game. Guys, we'll see if his players believe him. Oh, that's a clinical example of how to get up into a shooter, how to close out on a great shooter. Any effort short of that, then the shot is probably going down. Yep, really showing his ability to bother the long distance shot. No contact either. Pocket six. On the wing, Thornton. Over Hill. Again, the miss by the Bobcats. Here comes Darren Williams. Guys, we've seen some excellent offensive output. The serve, fellas, they've had it going on big time. Big time. Right. Right. Oh, oh, 
Monta with the point. And as soon as they can with the intentional foul. They didn't have much choice but to foul. Unfortunately, this is the last guy you want to send to the free throw line. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. I mean, they stopped the clock, but these free throws are pretty much automatic. Steve Nash. Two shots. Oh, but means it looked better. Good on the first, and that makes it a three-point lead. Two for two, and it's a four-point ball game. Kevin, that trip to the line was huge. They built their lead to two possessions. Timeout call the Pacers. They're losing by four. There's 18 seconds left in the fourth quarter. There's 18 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Great anticipation getting that steal. Just cruising to the finish line. Yeah, and barring something catastrophic happening, um, it looks like they'll go home with a nice victory here. Fires from deep. It's good from beyond the arc. Kevin, that's what you expect from him. When the pressure's at its highest, with the game on the line, that's when he's at his uh -huh. best. So a close game sees Charlotte taking this one. And Clark, you know, it was quite an ailment. So it was tight. Their guys were able to come up with big plays down the stretch, and that's the difference. And that'll wrap it up for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke. This is Kevin Hall, and thanks for tuning in. De hello, meg dobtam az öt pontot, és most még a fennél nincs egy teljesítve egy feladat. Még hat pontot szereztem. Your coach was quoted as saying after the game that the team was really broken up about tonight's loss. In fact, he said a couple of the guys were even crying about it in the locker room afterwards. What do you have to say about that? Láthatnám, az egyszer, az egyszer, a játék után a csapat valóban összető, hogy a ma este egy elvesztette. A fiúk megsiratták a, nem tudom milyen szobába, a, um, Ez a csapat most teljes a Campetion Los Antonban is so blended. I show you much yes grass. Ez a csapat, mint ami. That is simply no true. Ez nem így. Ez most pre nagyon vicces. Pretty funny. Anormál most találod az ember. Nem akkor legyen a szó köz. This is the full the competition. Ez egy teljes. I think you guys are reading into it a little too much. Always trying to make a story out of something even when there's nothing there. Look, I don't want to put words in the coach's mouth, but I think he was just trying to relay the fact that this team is full of competitors. It's not a happy locker room when we lose a game, especially a close one like this. We gonna bounce back. I know that much, but sometimes it takes a little while to recover before you can get ready for the next one. Hát most egyre többet jártam, a 11 perc volt, az imi csak 9, az 10, 11 perc, 6 pont, 2 lepattanót. 
szereztemus minus valami, mert nagyon mi de én minusos voltam minősítéshez. Nem ezt akartam volna nézni. Ki akartam volna én egy kalendárium naptárból lépni. Szórakozó itt velem. Chicago Bulls, Indiana Pacers. Ki három asszisztot kell, vagyis passz annyi kosárra. Két kosarat kell megfesteni. Ezt nem tudom, mit a karvel ez mit jelent. A great Tuesday night matchup coming right here on 2K Sports. We're here at Doors Bridge, Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg, and I'm Kevin Harlow. Thanks for joining us tonight. Earlier this season it was Chicago who came out on top in the last meeting against the Pacers. And now we'll see who gets the advantage after they tied at one apiece. They just shot the ball so well in that game. It was their night. I thought they were able to consistently find quality shots, and that was the difference. Brought to you by Steve Farm. Let's take a look at the Bulls' opening lineup. Rose and Dang on the floor. Carlos Boozer and Joe No, they're inside. And it's Brewer in at the two-guard spot. And for the Pacers, we've got Darren Williams, James Posey out there with Horford, then it's Brown, and it's Hill in at the three slot. Három lepatom nem a víz nyolc, azt is a egy víz nyolc, stíl oda, illa víz hat, blokk meg nagyon minden. Mezőn gól, pedig 30 nyolc, százalék, 30 hét. Négy nyolás. Csukába vezet is még állítod, hogy az egyszer. Doris Burke had a chance to catch up with head coach Tom Thibodeau. Well, he said to me, guys, with no degree of uncertainty, that their defense was what was likely to allow them to come out on top. He said from studying the tapes in the days before the game that in terms of their defense versus the opposing team's offense, this is a very favorable matchup for them. Let's watch and see, guys. Great stuff, Doris. Thanks. That's a mantra. We're going to hear, I think, a lot from coaches. Defense first. Yeah, you hear it all the time, Kevin, and that's the identity they want to have today, and I think it'll work for them as long as they execute. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's one thing to say it, but you got to bring it. And I think this team has to show great energy and aggression early on. Not a better step on that one and doesn't stun late. Indiana on D. Four point, and he slams it home. Here's the replay on this fight slam camp. I don't know what to say about that. I mean, he went reverse on him. Beautifully done. Clark Words can't even do that one justice. <laughs> Just let the pictures tell the story, guys. Brown outside. Right now averaging five points a game. Puts up the baby hook. The second chance effort, and Horford finishes inside. Now Rose, Williams picks him up. It's Bonnie Brewer on the way. As we are not sure about that one. The shot misses, and Indiana will go the other way with it. Here's Brown. He passes to space. Gives him the steal. Boy, their struggles continue. Turnover is a major factor. Yeah, and a little too casual. A little Joe Cool here to start the game, and that can be problematic. Pacers trail by six. Outside Williams. Horford backing in. Got a piece of it. Brewer with the steal. And way too many mistakes here in the early going. Oh! How's that for finishing with flavor? Absolutely fantastic. I think he was saving that one for a special occasion.
pass into space. For three, Williams, the rebound by Gibson. Both teams deciding to change it up. Now Bogans. Here's Watson. Top of the key jumper, no good. Looked like he scored that one off a little too quickly there, and the defense really was never in the play. Well, the scoring so is in the first the quarter. quarter. <laughs> I don't want my to hit me if she get the when he gets up. Now the second quarter getting ready to start out. Here's Pargo. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter of play. On the court for Indiana, Claxton in a point guard, Josh McRoberts out there with Rush, then there's Maurice Spates and Stevenson in at the two spot. And defensively, remember you got to fight through screens to avoid giving up on the Yeah, you're exactly right. Oh, the defense has to go over the top of that screen. I think that's how they get it done. Here are the top shooters from deep this month. These guys have been raining down threes lately. Oh, Look at Watson. He's absolutely deadly from outside. Well, it's not just that he's getting the baskets, Kevin, but he's been doing a great job of getting open for a shot. So it's a combination of making shots, but before that, getting himself open to take the shot. And that one misses. James Posey's checked in for Josh McRoberts. Chicago also making some changes. Joaquin Noah, he's checked in for Thomas. And it's Dang in for Gennaro Parker. So we can't get either to fall. The Bulls leading by nine. Even numbers. And here's Watson. Right now averaging seven points a game. Five on the clock. No more shot. Dang can't get it to go. Well, they are getting out rebounded here. And it's showing up on the scoreboard. I know well. so that yeah, it's something they're going to have to improve upon if they're going to win this game. Too risky there on that pass. Yeah, Again, the miss by Dank. And taking care of the ball has been a problem for him. Yeah, defensively, some really good pressure being applied, though, so you've got to give credit there. And it seems like they've been rattled a little bit. Do yeah. so you think they've been rattled? Oh, they're, they're rattled, all right. And turnovers will kill you, especially with a, a team like this. They can force turnovers and get out in transition. Taking two shots. And that one falls for Spates. Both shots good from the strike. Here is Watson. On the wing, Dang. Right side, Dang. Over rush. Here's Gibson. Shakes off the strong D and gets to the bucket for two. Gibson's got his first points of the night. Pacers trail by nine. Now Rush. Feeds to Spates. Working on Noah. There's the pass to Spates. 
releases. He drains the turn on the jump shot. Spades has got four points. Hey, in the now he took advantage of that mismatch size-wise, went right up with it. Yeah, he loves those mid-range jumpers. And the first time out of the game called for Chicago. They put up a nice win again. And we've reached halftime in this one. Rolls out front. They lead by 13. Happy oh, Tuesday to you, and welcome to HP at the Golden Gate. The half. A tremendous start for the Bulls. They're certainly playing up to the. The Hawks picked up the win against the Suns in. Now well, it's been a one-sided affair so far through the first two quarters, but there's plenty of time to mount a comeback. Here is Watson. It's a 14-point game. So with Boozer on the bench, here's the five for Tom Thibodeau right now. Watson out there with Bogans. Then it's Taj Gibson. Then there's Kyle Corbin. And it's Thomas in at the center, filling out the middle. That's now six straight points off open threes. Get a hand up, fellas. Pay attention to the scouting report. Hussey, uh, you know how quickly things can go south when you start giving up wide open looks to this team. Here's Rush. Drops in the layup for two. Spades has got six. There was no question about it. He was going to finish that one off. Here is Watson. The lead is 15. The three from Corver. The Pacers pull it in. A ways to get back into it, but they've got some time. He is to avoid mistakes and make each possession count. Yeah, and I think the tendency can be to, to really rush or, or push the game a little bit. I think they need to avoid that. Knocked away. Ah, Excellent steal that time. Pesky defensive play on this part. Takes it up. And it's rejected. Now the Pacers with it. Down by 15. It's off to Charlotte for him after this game as they take out on the Bobcats. That one will start off a three-game road trip for the team. He's covered by Watson. Releases from 15. And again, it's Indiana converted. And now six of their last ten points from mid-range. Yeah, jump shot really serving these guys pretty well. Tipped away. And here we go. No. Slams it on the run. They got on this roll a while ago, and they just haven't looked back. Yeah, he didn't try to get too cute on that one. He just simply threw it down. Still, though, Steve makes for a great highlight, doesn't he? Yeah, well, anytime he dunks the ball, it's pretty to watch because he is athletic. Here is Watson. The baseline J off the mark. He should have knocked that one down, and he'll be the first one to tell you that. Here's Rush. And Foster backs in. Good luck. And Spates gets to go. Spates has got eight. Still down big, but you like to see that they've strung together several good possessions in a row now. Yeah, and it's a start, and you've got to start somewhere. They need something to build off of to get back into this. Now here's Gibson. That's good. Watson's got his first bucket of the night. Fantastic assist, tremendous. I mean, you gotta love that kind of passion. Beautiful. Here is McRoberts. Spates. He's guarded by Thomas. A shake. And again, it's Maurice Spates. He's got 10. They're closing in here. Their offense heating up. Well, you want to maintain contact, and after this nice run here, they've made up some ground, and they're right where they want to be. Fantastic steal. He knew exactly when to jump into that passion line. Well done. And it's uh, Foster missing. Bulls leading by nine. Time running down now at the end of the quarter. They could go two for one if they decide to. And I think that's what they need to do if the, if the shot's there. Players from 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spates. Spates has got eight here in the quarter. 
Like one thing we've seen from these guys is excellent ball movement. And you love to see that, Kevin. I mean, I we'll love watching that selfish play, and I know Steve enjoys that too. Yeah, that's the best part of the game. I mean, a five-man team game where the ball moves with so much unselfish play. It's beautiful to watch. Looking at who's out there now for the Pacers. James Posey's checked in for Foster. Hill comes in for Josh McRoberts. And Darren Williams is subbed in for Brandon Rush. Here's Rose. Ten points for him. Here's Dang. It's good. This time the assist from Rose. Eleven points for Luol Dang. Fellas, they are heating up from outside now. Yep, of their last five hoops, three of them have come from long range. Williams inside. For the three, nice shot by Posey. Posey's got six. They strike right back with the three of their own. Steve has a great way to respond after giving up the long ball. Well, it's been an exciting game. Plenty of offense as we head to the fourth quarter. Luol Dang really making a difference here. The way he's moved it's through the defense so far, too. Every ball is going to get it. Now as we get going here in the fourth, let's send it over to Doris Burke for our Sprite Spark. Thank you guys. Who gets the Sprite Spark, you ask? The Chicago Bulls. No hiccups in their game plan has everything rolling in their direction. Sometimes things just fall into place and it looks like it's one of those games. And so it's Chicago winning this one. It was a solid win, Clark. Yeah, it was, and I think it came down to will more than skill. They went out and got this one. That'll do it for now for Doris Burke, Steve Curry, Clark Kellogg, and the rest of the 2K Sports crew. This is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for joining us. Once again, you have been named as the Rookie of the Month. I mean, your star seems to be rising so rapidly at this point in your career. What does your future hold? Uh, once again, uh, I mean, never a whole of guests do yeah. I chill about the rising faculty from the point of the career. But hogy tartod a jövődet? Hmm. Ajó, hol a baráti nőm? Csak egy több pégete, hogy mi marad a év angol. Hope you for great new deal. Reménytelen nagy üzlet, amit a gyűrűk és a díjak, illetve a lótok és gyűrűk. Tetszik, hogy tartjuk a győzelm. Hm, hát ez... Hát legyen a kettes. Hopefully it holds great success, both on and off the court. With our fans cheering me on every night and my great teammates feeding me the ball, only great things can happen. Great things, my man. Hát az most mindenkinek bejött félig, meddig a ligát lesz számít. Jó, Spence, egy játszott a három assist és két labdalopás mutattam be. Egy D pluszos minősítést. Hány meg? Elég hat van az? 82 mincs az alapszakasz, egy turnover, visz vagy turnover, 
meccsen kell egy törnóval, mert Rattus ez is. Na, a C pluszos minősítés nem mindig lesz. And it's been home cooking for the Bobcats in the midst of this homestand here in Charlotte. They're in ninth place in the Eastern Conference, still in the playoff picture, but they could use some wins. Well, they've shown in their previous meetings with this club that they know how to beat these guys. But with that being said, you can be sure their opponent will give them a much different look than in the prior match. Agreed. I mean, things probably won't be as easy for them this time around as they have been previously. They'll have a lot of different things thrown at them tonight. Uh, many that they might not have seen before, so they'll have to be able to adjust on the fly. Let's check out Indiana's starting lineup. He'll out there with James Posey. There's Brown, then there's Darren Williams. And it's Horford in at the center position. And for the Bobcats, they've got Joel Prisbilla. McGuire is out there with White, then it's Thornton, and it's Nash in at the point. And the Pacers... A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Well, Paul Silas gave me a few minutes to catch up with him. In terms of their defensive attitude coming into this one, he said, we've been protecting the rim very well at that end of the floor, and that's so something I've got I want to see continue out. today. Wonderful, Doris. Thanks for thinking about uh, Clark and Steve, their defense right off the bat here. Yeah, you're never going to go wrong putting the bulk of your effort into getting stops. I mean, that always pays off. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think if that's going to be the case, if they're going to bring that style and that, that type of energy, they've got to be ready to go deep into their bench tonight as well. After Charlotte getting the fruit, lifts up, and a dunk by Horford. That was all about the assist there. Just a beautiful feed. Here's Nash. He's coming off a 16-point game against Milwaukee. Here is Cunningham. Pass to Thornton. Williams picks him up. Good luck. That's good for Nash on the assist by Thornton. Living a little room service down with that dish. The feed to Horford. Backing him down. Moves back up. And Spates gets it to go. And it's all knotted up. Nice start here. Taking five shots. Only missed one of them. He kicks to Thornton. He's covered by Brown. Six to shoot. The shot will not go, and Indiana will go the other way with it. Outplayed in the previous game on their schedule, losing to Chicago. And what really hurt them in that game was their defense. They were very, very lackadaisical at that end of the court. Well, I would agree with that. I'd give you that. I mean, they didn't play with the kind of energy and emotion they needed, but I wonder about the defensive scheme. I mean, in general, the coaching staff did very little to adjust to what the other team was doing. Here's Nash. After the made shot from Shannon Brown. Nash, he's guarded by Williams. Pulls from the top of the key. That doesn't go either for Nash. Indiana leading. Last time they came together was in Charlotte where they fell to the Bobcats. Well, they lost that game because of the foul trouble. And I, I didn't think they showed enough discipline in that game. They committed some silly fouls. And as a result, they had to go to their bench. And the reserves just didn't come through. Now, here's Nash. Shannon Brown unable to get his shot to go. Again, the miss by the Bobcats. Tell you, he had all the time in the world to get that shot off. What Steve said a moment ago about their foul situation, the last game was really the story that was, wasn't it, Clark? Yeah, it sure was. I mean, they were just a little too aggressive on defense. That's a good point, but not if you can't limit your fouls. You got to be aggressive, but you got to do it without foul. Guys, you're not going to get away with that kind of defense when he's got the ball. I mean, you got to do better than that. And here's Nash, averaging 19 points per contest. Out of bounds, and they'll keep possession. 
Now that we have the chance to show you the teams in the top of the NBA in steals this year. Number one, the Pacers. You know, this year they've been the number one team in terms of steals. They put an awful lot of pressure on the ball handler, and they also as a team do a good job of... Here's Thornton. His last outing with 20 points. We've got Thornton. Right out there with Joel Prisvilla. And it's Green. And it's Temple in at the shooting guard position. So that's the group out there for Charlotte. And it's going to be two free throws. Two contact on the shot. As we get a break in the action now, let's take a look at the East and how the teams are stacking up. Taking a look at Charlotte. Winding things down this season. They're in that all-important ninth position within striking distance of a playoff spot. And of course, Indiana. Right now, they're five spots below them. Looking at Indiana, they've experienced a sort of worst-case scenario season. Nothing has worked out for them. Yeah, you're right about that, Clark. I mean, uh, the expectations were definitely higher uh, than where they are right now. And, you know, given what, what we thought they had talent-wise, it's kind of hard to believe they are where they are right now. And what they get the massive bid on it. And he misses the second one as well, so he is 0 for 2 that time. And this is how you build a lead and protect it. I mean, be tough and get to the free throw line. Yeah, they've got up the attempt there in the second it, quarter. And you said it, Steve. I mean, they've been the aggressors. They've been in attack mode the whole way. Nice stick there to create the shot, but it's no good. Pacers leading by five. Fires for three. Offensive rebound. And the slam dunk by Spates simply tenacious play out of that young fellow. Yeah, excellent put back jam, you're right. Well, that's what he prides himself on. Hard work under the glass. Here's Temple, right now averaging seven points a game. Back to Thornton. Will it go? And the jumper falls for him. Thornton's got four points now in the quarter. He took advantage of that pick and he did the rest knocking down the jam. Kicks it to Posey. Right now averaging five points a game. Here's Claxton. And Chris Billa sends it back. A dead trail by five. And slam down hard. Another look on the spike slam team. Well, that's a dunk you will not see very often. You won't pass that one by. No doubt about that. I wish he would, though. You can never see too many of those. He dishes it to Rush. Deflects the pass. And takes it in the pass. So well. Beautifully done. Throws it down despite the man right in his face. A chance here for a three-point play. That's how it works. Your defense feeds into the offense. Yeah, you know, excellent work, I thought. Solid work on both ends in that particular sequence. Look at what Thornton has done so far. Ten points and two steals. He's showing us those quick hands today, both when he has the ball and when he doesn't. Yeah, he's really distributed well on the offensive side and then Ball hawking defensively. He's been impressive. Looking at who's out there now for the Hawks. Cooks checked in, and it's McGuire in for Dante Green. And it's tied up with that one. Here is Williams. Seven points in the game. Posey dishes to Williams. I really don't like what I'm seeing their last couple of possessions, Kevin. That's two turnovers in a row. Careless turnovers at that. Uh, they're getting a little casual with the ball. They've got to nip that in the bug right now. The only question there was who was going to finish it. Easy, fast break. Yeah, you know what? And uh, I think they made the right call there, Steve. Here's Thornton. Good, and the assist goes to Nash. Thornton's got 13. And yeah, they're moving the ball now. Eight of the last ten points coming off assisted buckets. Steve, nothing makes a coach smile as much as pure selfless teamwork. Let's go. Nick Roberts' shot is good. And the Pacers lead by two. You know, he's not somebody they lean on for points, but when he does score, that's a bonus. Now the pass to Thornton. 
now here's Nash. He's got six. There's the three. Thornton, no good. And I think whichever team starts to dominate the glass could really take control of this game. I won't disagree with you. I mean, it's so tight between these teams right now on the board that um, you're just waiting to see which team might pull away. And here we go with Steve Nash. Cook, the pass to McGuire. They're working it around. Hangs in the air. Ah, so we get the yeah, whistle. Contact, contact on the way up with two shots coming up. Well, that should be a rule. No layups. Protect the paint. Make them earn every point. Yeah, I think that's just tough, hard no smash mouth basketball. Make your opponent earn their points from the line. Don't give up any layups. First free throw. It's a tie game in Charlotte. 2K Sports, back in a moment here at the Time Warner Cable Arena in Charlotte. Welcome to the Halftime Report presented by... Boston ended up with a loss to the 70s. The third quarter now beginning. Both sides looking to pull away in the last half of the game. Now the dish to Foster, and lots of contact there. Missing the shot, he'll shoot two. And here's a look at what's coming up for the Bobcats. They'll be playing host to Toronto for the next one. That game will conclude a three-game homestand. And they now lead as the free throw drops for him. He's perfect from the line this time. Here's Bledsoe. Right now averaging five points a game. And so in the game for the Pacers. Claxton in a shooting guard. Jeff Foster out there with Josh McRoberts. And there's Teague and Stevenson in at the three slot. Pulls it up. Temple can't get it to go. Brown. And a missed late. Man. That's yeah. too bad. Easy shot there, and I got to knock that one down. Well, that's a concentration cramp right there. I mean, just lost focus. Here's Claxton, and he drops in the way up off the glass. And the Pacers lead by four. They're rolling now. Five straight hoops to start this quarter. And Temple kicks to Bloodsoe. Fires top of the key. Buries the jump shot. Here's T. Passes it to McRoberts. Moving it around nicely. And he finishes nicely on the way. He has six. Boy, every time they drop it in, they do so from close range. Easy baskets. Yeah, high percentage looks time and time again, guys. And it's paying off of them. The way they're playing this game, I, I like their strategy. He just hasn't been able to build any momentum in this game. He's got to find something out there. Uh, it seems like he tightens up, guys, when he gets close to the rim, especially with, with a defender nearby. Here's Temple. He's got eight. He passes it to Cook. Rocket six. That's a go from the wing. Cannot hit. And Indiana will go the other way with it. 
You know, with very little defense there, that's a shot he should be taking and making. Here's Teague. The Bobcats going in. This game coming after a loss against the Bucks. Yeah, their long range shooting really deserted them. And uh, in that game, guys, they couldn't get any from that from that line. And that made all the difference in the game. I mean, they clearly tried to use the three pointer as the primary weapon, but because they weren't falling, it was disastrous. Both teams deciding to change it up. No good, and they don't get the three point play. Indiana leading. Outside Williams. Backs in. Shoots. Here's Foster. The second chance bucket is good. And the defense has to pick it up a little bit here. They're getting bullied inside, guys. Yeah, they just have not competed well enough. I mean, they've not fought. You want to see fight and aggressiveness. Wide a screen on Hill. Dishes it to Prismilla. Feeds it to Temple. From the wing, Hill pulls it in. Hill's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. Yeah, he's struggled with his shot this quarter, and he's got to find a groove somehow. Here's Foster. He's guarded by Chris Miller. Outside him. Ball stolen. Puts up a prayer. And that's it for the third quarter. Both teams scoring well as we head to the fourth. It's been one outstanding game from Darren Williams. You know, all game long, he's gone right at defenders, creating contact, and has found a way to get to the free throw line. You know, it might not be the prettiest way to tally up the points, but they count nonetheless. I mean, the fourth quarter's coming up, and he might get some guys in foul trouble if he keeps dominating the paint like this. Pacers out in front, up four. Fourth quarter getting going here. It's time for our Sprite Spark in the Game Report. Let's go to Doris Park. Well, Kevin, it's the Pacers with the Spark Award. There have been no missteps along the way, and they have shown great heart and hustle so far. It's been a big factor as to why they're in the position to win this thing. Guys? And as always, Doris, thank you. So no problem for Indiana as they get the win. Not much to be critical of with this win, Clark. Not at all. I mean, they showed up not just to play. They showed up to give great effort and to win, and they did both. And that'll wrap it up for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke. This is Kevin Harlan, and thanks for tuning in. Kate skill point at Sarah's time now. We know she did show me that Kate's a good fan. You guys were firing on all cylinders out there tonight. That's got to be a win that makes you feel good about the team as a whole. Agree or disagree? A fiúk mit, mit, mit húzt minden cilinder a kalap gondolom arra a ma este, hogy nyertek, ez jó tesz a csapat, mit tudom, vagy jó, nem mondom a szók, ez szerintem minden, it's what is good, ez egy jó győzben. Fiz a good, a hangulatnak a győzelem mind jó a győzelemnek. Vagy Luke West is. Domináltunk a... Dominálva nyert a csapat. Szimpla játék. Szerintem a szó köz most. Egy jó győzelem. Yeah, it was a good win for the team, man. We did what we were supposed to do and, and it made a difference. 
It's always easier when you can build a little cushion like that. There's less pressure, not as much of a sense of urgency. And you feel like you can play your own game without worrying too much about the score. If only every game was like that, man. Igen, a győzelem mindig jó csapatnak és az embernek. Különbözik, bla bla bla. Fel is értem, mert ugye van egy évet itt több. Ilyenkor baj az ember, miért nem tanult meg angolul. 10 percet játszottam, két pontot szereztem, két asszisz, meg két labdalopás. És megint D pluszos minősítés, meg 4-es. 4-es föl, 4-5-öt, vagy itt a milyen osztályzat. Miami 47-12, hő, mert a gáz, most az következik. Tudom, hogy egy három pontos lejjebb van a drunk. Tudom, mi a lejjebb, és mi a drunk. Ez szokásos, mint tudom. Mi. This is 2K Sports Broadcasting from Miami as the Heat take to the hardwood in American Airlines Arena. For the Miami Heat, they are coming off a good outing against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And they really took it to them. That's a flat out blowout right there. There's no other word to use. And that win really came from offensive execution. They were really clicking on all cylinders. You know, you look at it and they have a lot of options and uh, everybody was involved and engaged. They used all of them. Here's the starting group for the Indiana Pacers. We've got Hill. Horford is out there with James Posey. Then it's Brown and it's Williams at the one. And for the Heat, LeBron and Bosch are the three and the four. Chalmers and Wade are the one and the two. And it's Ilgauskas in at the five down low. And the Pacers. Here's Williams. Again, Sharp. He was really on his game. Here's Spates. It's good. Great play by Williams to set it up. Spades has got his first two points of the night. Boy, a fast start here. Their offense has been very impressive. Yeah, they're making their own luck, Clark. Really playing with a purpose right, offensively. Right, 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 right. Now, here's Wade. 26 points for him last game against Cleveland. Bosch dishes to LeBron. Goes up the baseline. It's hauled in by Williams. Miami on D. They trail by six. This is the second time they've matched up against Indiana. Well, they came out on top in that last game mainly because of their aggressiveness going to the rim. Well, they drew a lot of fouls and that became a major issue in that game. He just had to hang around for a while. A little extra hang time on that dunk and made sure the photo op didn't go to waste. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's, a, that's usually a technical foul. Part. I think he got away with that one there. So it's Miami. The Pacers making the shot. Let's find out what Doris Burke has for us. Yes, Kevin, I spoke briefly with Eric Spolstra. He said the key to this game was simple, telling me everything for us starts on the defensive end. If we can't get it done defensively, we're not going to get it done, period. He was pretty emphatic about that, as you can tell, guys. Thanks, Doris. So Clark and Steve, defense, it looks like, coming first for them today. And while you don't really want to put all of your cookies in one jar, I mean, I think emphasis on defense is a way to go. Yeah, I'd agree, because if you come out and establish the defense right away, it kind of sets the tone, and you really kind of take control of that game emotionally. LeBron kicks the house. Williams picks him up. 
here is House. Five to shoot. LeBron passes to House. It's off his leg. And they're saying he kicked the ball. Mario Jones, he's still kicking for Miami. Miami Here's Chalmers. Nine points last game out. Feeds it to LeBron. And LeBron gets it to go with the assist by Chalmers. LeBron's now got his second basket of the night. In Lotus Space. The bus cheat. Great job playing the passing lanes and forcing that turnover. LeBron wishes to wave. Yes, and it's LeBron picking up the assist. Six points for Wade. That's the kind of lead pass we've seen him make over and over again. Horford against Bosch. Horford no luck. Miami trailing. Coach is liking Clark what he's seeing from his offense. And shoot, why wouldn't he? I mean, guys, they're filling it up with ease, executing, getting quality shots. I mean, this is fun to watch. Yeah, this is like a clinic out there, guys. This is exactly how you attack the defense. Move the ball, sharp cuts, but really a nice pace to their offense. And the basket by Jones. Good defense, but you gotta love the finish with the finger roll over the top. Williams in the post, defended by Chalmers. Back to Orth. Six on the shot clock. To stop the run. And it's Horford again missing. And here comes LeBron. A 29-point game for him in the win against Cleveland. Oh, Elbow shot is on the way. That's good. Eight points for Wade. Sometimes folks forget about his decent mid-range jump. He can knock those down all game, given a chance. At the end of one, both teams putting up some points. Heat lead by three. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. It's the Heat up 19. <laughs> I'm Damon Bruce. Hello and welcome to the The Wizards over at Verizon Center. Welcome back, everyone, to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. On the court right now for the Pacers. Claxton in a shooting guard. Maurice Spades out there with Brown. Then there's Jeff Foster. And it's Williams at the point. You know, they're just getting hammered inside and really need to find a way to be tougher down there. they got to be physical. they got to man up in there. I agree. I mean, look at the points they're giving up. Most of them seem to be coming inside the paint. House kicks to LeBron. From about 16, buries the jump shot. LeBron's now got seven now in this quarter. Boy, he's been good offensively tonight. I really like what I've seen. Outside, Williams leans inside. He gets a hand on it. Huh? It's been a game for him to forget yeah. so far, anyway. We'll see if he can pick it up. He just lost track of where he was on the floor. Yeah. 
Pacers trail by 20. Left side, Brown. Shoots. Indiana again, missing. They've been doing a great job of sharing the ball. Excellent display of team play. Steve, I know you love great teamwork. Yeah, so much fun to watch when the ball is moving. Uh, there's kind of a, a rhythm to the game that just happens. The ball moves almost on its own. Yeah, but it's fun to watch. And that one's good. They're just getting better offensively as the game goes along, making good choices and getting high percentage shots. And they're playing hard and playing smart too, Steve. Uh, they've just been very, very good. Goes up from the top of the key. It's all in by the Heat. At the conclusion of this game, they're off to Minnesota where they'll take out the Timberwolves. That's game one of a three-game road trip. LeBron outside. Open luck. Cannot count on him to miss a good look like that very often. Right now averaging five points a game. From beyond the arc, it's all in by the Heat. LeBron's now got his fifth rebound going right down in the game. Here's Wade. Flushes it down to finish the break. Man, he continues to rack up the numbers. Guys, I tell you what, this is as well rounded the game as you'll see. 153 left in the third quarter. Guys, this offense very effective. Going right at him. And, and this is where you just start picking apart the defense and, and now you take their confidence away you can really take control of this game here is house five points in the game lead outside williams picks him up shot clock at five it's house outside can't get it to go and it's the Pacers taking it the other way. They defeated Charlotte in their last game. I thought offensively, a lot of what they were doing really worked. Uh, but, of course, they found some gaping holes in that defense. See, they had a bunch of success on even the most basic plays they were running. I mean, that was some pretty poor defense there. Wade fires. Straight up. It's blocked. A challenging stretch here for Indiana. Williams inside. Wade is covering. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. Pretty throw good, Williams. And a new group in for the Heat. Chris Bosh has checked in for Eric Dampier. James Jones comes in for LeBron. Mike Bibby's checked in for Dwayne Wade. And it's Chalmers in for Eddie House. And the Pacers also changing it up. Al Horford is checked in for Foster. Jose comes in for Maurice Spates. And it's Hill in for Shannon Brown. The Heat leading by 20. And here is Chalmers. Hot, what's up? He passes to Bibby. There's the three. That's good. And so Chalmers with the assist. Chalmers has got five assists tonight. And Indiana has possession. Here's Claxton. And once again off the mark by Indiana. There's 25 seconds left in the third quarter. The feed to Jones. And Horford pulls it down. Horford's got six rebounds in the game. From 18 feet away, in the basket by Hill. Hill's got nine. And at the end of the third quarter, a huge lead in this one may already have been decided. What can you say, LeBron James? What an impressive effort today. Yeah, he's stuck.
Fourth quarter didn't go in here. It's time for our Sprite Spark in the Game Report. Let's go to Doris Burke. Well, Kevin, for that great That's stretch that he just put to together, so they get the Sprite Spark Award. Their lead continues to grow as the game progresses. They have shown absolutely no mercy and continue to find a way to add to their lead every trip down the floor, guys. Thank you, Doris. Thank you. 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 Spurtability. They were reeling. So with LeBron on the bench, this is who Eric Spolster has on the floor. They've got Dexter Pittman. James Jones is out there with Hassan. Then there's Mike Bibby. And it's House with the two guard. Bibby for three. Gets it down. Six points in short order. Two straight from deep. That's what can happen with that three ball. Yep, yep. They've got it going. Nice clean looks. Here's Horford. Goes to the reverse layup and taps it in. Horford's got four points this quarter. But well, you just see them taking it strong into the paint over and over again. Yeah, that really seems to be the strategy, partner. I mean, pound it inside. Jones with it. Fires from deep. It's hauled in by Brown. Man, they're struggling a little bit on the glass. They've got to pick up their physical play in the paint. Yeah, it's about being tougher um, and more physical, just as you said, Steve. If they can do that better, um, they've got a chance to come back. Well, they've done a lot of their damage from mid-range here, guys. I mean, knocking down those shots with regularity. You know, how about eight of their last ten points, guys, coming off that mid-range area jump shot. So, shows you, you don't have to be at the rim to score. As on the screen on Brock. Bibby with the bucket. And the Heat lead by 20. And did you see the pick there? Got him wide open all the way to the rim. Over up top. Grant Hill on the way. Defended by Jones. Pass to Brock. Shoots from 12. The shot is off. That's a strong bad shooting for him. He's starting to rush things a little bit. And that's the instinct you'd like to see, but he'd be better off just slowing things down a little bit. Pacers trail by 20. Brown, right side. Out. Gets the reach-in call. That's foul number two for him. It's really been great to see all the talent that's come into the league since 2003. You can kind of sense the bar raising across the league as far as what it takes to win now. And the Pacers call time here. I'm going to stay that kind of New Town, the NBA, Steve, the LeBrons, Chris Wall, Derek Rose, Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin. What comes to your mind? This guy used to draft players and scout players and, and then watch them try to win. Well, what comes to my mind is how lucky we all are to be able to watch these players for the, the next decade promises to be fantastic if you're an NBA fan. We got all this talent, you got some great coaches, you got some fun young teams to watch. So this is really a special era for the NBA. From deep. And it's Miami with the rebound. Nice little rebounding advantage they're enjoying here. Yeah, and that's the reason they've got this big lead. I mean they're dominating the glass and really being tough for the opponent. Are you kidding me? We're like they forgot this half. We haven't missed a single free throw. Stepping up and knocking him down, Clark. International time, but we had to push him. Hey, go, Clark. Itt, amikor azt mondják, hogy a végéjátok a sarszén, de volt egy szabályt alatt. He's perfect for the line this time. Well, if you want to win a championship, you really have to have multiple stars. That's why Miami went after LeBron and Chris Bosh. That's why the Lakers wanted to trade for Pau Gasol. And look at Boston. You know, they end up trading for Garnett and Ray Allen. You put him with Paul Pierce, you got three stars. So that's what it takes if you want to win the whole thing. Rush outside, cannot hit. 
Our heat leading by 22. Now Bibby, picked up by Brown. Jones with a screen on Brown. Shot clock at six. It's House outside. Again, the miss by the Heat. And Steve, you mentioned how it really takes a number of great players to win it all. I think we've seen a move now of star players taking matters into their own hands, trying to join forces through free agency to win titles. Yeah, I think you'll see some of that. I don't think it's going to be just an overwhelming trend. And part of that is that these great players all have uh, relationships with one another through Team USA. So that takes away from some of the animosity and competitive spirit and fire um, that might exist and, and makes them realize that they can work together and they can accomplish great things together. I mean, that big summer for Miami, perhaps, I don't think it's really going to be a trend as I said earlier, but um, it may happen a little more than in past years. Time out call the Pacers. They're losing by 25. 122 left in the fourth quarter. And a new group in for the Heat. Chris Bosch has checked in for Hazard. LeBron comes in for James Jones. Dwayne Wade's checked in for Eddie House. And it's Chalmers in for Mike Bibby. Then for the Pacers. Horford comes in for Josh McRoberts. And it's Hill in for Brandon Rush. One twenty-two left to play here in the fourth. Defended by Chalmers. Looking to end the drought. An absolute bomb from three-point range. They're simply living and dying from behind the arc in the second half. And um, I don't think that's the way to go here. They're trailing. The three-point shot can be used. They've got to balance it out. And the Heat get another bucket right there. Another bucket, and they are just pulling away here now. Yep, no doubt about it. They're sprinting to the finish line. He tries for three. No good. And Miami will go the other way with the ball. Wait up top. Posey covering. LeBron passes to Bosch. They're moving the ball. He kicks it to Chalmers. Uncovered. The shot's good on the assist by Wade. Well, they're just trying to run fly now. Yeah, this thing is pretty much over. Yeah, there's nothing but the result to be determined on. So it's time to start thinking about the next game now. And a new group in for the Heat. Udonis Hazel, he's checked in for Bosch. James Jones comes in for LeBron. Eddie House is checked in for Dwayne Wade. And Mike Bibby is subbed in for Mario Chalmers. Twenty-nine seconds left in the fourth. Here's Brown. And the layup falls. You know, Kevin, they were a step late on their defensive rotation, and that helped them get right to the rim. Here is House. And they can just dribble the ball until the buzzer. Yeah, exactly. They gotta be happy with the outcome here. Oh, lady, you're right. Now, here is Bibby. He's guarded closely. Paxton is whistled for reaching in. That's his first foul. Well, they're not going to get back into this game when they commit frustration fouls like that one. How about exasperation fouls? I mean, that's what it looked like to me. It's an indication of the kind of game they've been having. Here is House. And here's Haslam. He feeds it to House. And so Miami takes this one by a big margin. You know, Clark, every team has a bad night, and these guys might want to watch the tape of this game the next time they have a bad night to remind themselves how dominant they can be. Well, this is one of those dreamlike games for a coach. Thank you for joining us for this presentation of NBA Basketball on 2K Sports. For Clark, Stephen Doris, and the rest of the crew, Kevin Harlan saying, see you next time. Ecco, allora per il test, per un termine di meno, ho già esaminato il suo punto di performance, ha zisto meno sbagliato.
Obviously the team didn't bring it tonight. How does the way you prepare for the next game change after a loss like this? Oblivion a csapat most ma este Bramamba. Hogyan milyen úton következő játékba? Hát ez kicsit furcsa lenne az, hogy most szükség lenne kirúgásokra. Kell egy kis szemténk, az nem tudom mi. Szükség van egy munkára, hogy 8 pontos dob. <gül> Csapatnak 8 pontot, hogy... Um, jó legyen az egyes. De nem tudom mi a számítén. I don't know, but we definitely need to do something. I hate to lose. And I especially hate it when we clearly get outplayed. That was the case tonight. And you better believe I'm not in a good mood about it. We got to work that much harder tomorrow and every day moving forward. That includes me, and it especially includes my teammates. We can't have guys taking the night off like a couple of them did tonight. They know who they are, but we all got to make a concerted effort to keep the team from playing this way again, ever again. Pon, vele találtam a bus, amikor mindenki azt mondta, hogy...